In this video, I'd like us to use our TI-84 to explore the properties of a quadratic function. So perhaps you already know how to maybe factor or complete the square and graph using different ways, you know, you know how to do it. But if you want a shortcut, the TI-84 is pretty awesome. Okay, so in the TI-84, all right, let's quit out of this. So we're doing it from scratch. All right, so in the TI-84, what you'd want to do is graph your, your equation. So you want to go to y equals, and then type the equation that we have there. So we have x squared um, plus 4x minus 5. All right, so once you've typed that function in, all you have to do is press graph to see what it looks like. Now, if you don't have it looking wonderfully centered and beautiful like this, um, you would want to probably go to zoom standard. But since mine is fine, I will leave it as is. Or you could change your window. But again, mine is wonderful. All right. So people usually ask about the intercepts, the vertex, and the axis of symmetry. So that's what we'll talk about in this video today. All right, so let's look at the easiest one first, and the easiest one is the y-intercept. You actually don't need your calculator to figure that out, um, but let's say you forgot how to figure it out. Well, that number here, or c value, you remember ax squared plus bx plus c, the c value usually tells you the y-intercept. So the y, it crosses the y-axis at 0, comma negative 5. But let's say you forgot, that's okay. The calculator actually always scrolls straight to that point. So you want to press trace. When you're figuring out the y-intercept, press trace. Usually it just appears right on the y-intercept. Maybe it wouldn't for you, so you could, let's say it appeared there instead, you could scroll over and it always passes by the y-intercept. You wanna make sure that on the y-intercept, zero is always equal to x is always equal to 0. So let's make a note of how we found that so we don't forget. So note, on the calculator, use trace and go to the point where x is 0. All right, so that's the x-intercept out of the way. So now as far as the, sorry, that's not the x-intercept, that's the y-intercept y-intercept out of the way. Now we're ready for the x-intercepts. Now the x-intercepts is are where the graph crosses the x-axis. Often happens in two places. Sometimes it doesn't happen at all. Sometimes it happens in one place. So this is for example two real roots because it crosses in two places. Now another name for roots is zeros. Another name for roots and zeros is intercept x-intercept, another name for root zeros, and x-intercept is solutions. All right, so now that you know so many ways of saying the same thing, um, in order to do this on the calculator, we're actually going to look for zeros. The scrolling trick doesn't really work here. It doesn't exactly land on the x-intercept most of the time. So in order to find our zeros, we have to go to second, calc, and then we scroll down to zero, and we press enter. Now, what it's going to ask us to do is border the point that we're looking for, put boundaries around the point we're looking for. So now it's asking for the left bound. And so I'm going to say enter because it is to the left of this point. So enter, right bound. I'm going to scroll to the right of that point. All right, so it's now to the right of the point I'm looking for. This is the point, it's up here. So I'm going to press enter. Then it asks me to guess. So I want to go as close to that point as possible for my guess. We can get closer. And then press enter. And my x-intercept, one of them, is 1. Nope, let's look at that again. Ah, yeah, it is 1. 1 comma 0. But there is another x-intercept, and we have to do the same thing to find it. 
So we go to second, trace, zero, because that point is called a zero. It says left bound, and we need to go all the way to the left of the other x-intercept. Oh, there we go. So now the x-intercept that we're looking for is here, and we're to the left of it, so we're good. So we press enter, and then we can go to the right of that point, and we press enter, and then it says guess. So we go close to the point, that's close enough, and we press enter, and it gives us the other x-intercept, which is negative 5, comma, 0. All right. So just to reiterate, on the calculator, use ah, second calc or second trace, which is actually calc, and then go to 0 to find the x-intercept. All right, so now that we have the x-intercepts, both of them, the y-intercept, now we can find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So something about the axis of symmetry, well, first of all, let's talk about what it is. The axis of symmetry is the line that goes straight down the middle. So I'm tracing it here with my mouse, the line that goes straight down the middle of our quadratic graph or parabola. So in order to find it, there is an equation you may already know, x equals negative b over 2a, but I'm not going to use that right now. Since we already have our x-intercepts, I'm going to just say that to find the axis of symmetry, we just average those two numbers because it's right in the middle. So to find the axis of symmetry, average the x-intercepts. All right, so we have one as one of the x-intercepts and we have negative five as the other. So we're doing one plus negative five all over two should give us the axis of symmetry. That is negative four over two, which is negative two. Well, you know what? That required some work on our part. But anyway, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative two. There's actually a quicker way to do it using the TIAT4. So let's go over that right now. So if we had found the vertex, the vertex would actually tell us the axis of symmetry. So we're going to work backwards with this. So we go to, in order to find the vertex, we go to second trace, which is calc. Now, the vertex in this case, since the graph is pointing in this way, the vertex is also called a minimum. So we go to number three, which is the minimum, press enter, and we get the same kind of questions, left bound, right bound. So make sure you're to the left of the minimum, which we are, so we can just press enter. Then scroll when it says to the right, so go to the right. And anywhere to the right is fine, so press enter. And now it says guess, so go to the minimum point or as close as you can get to it and press enter. And now notice that this number says um, two, negative 2.000001. The calculator is approximating if you round to three significant figures, four significant figures, even five significant figures, the answer is really just negative two. And lo and behold, look at that. The x-coordinate at the minimum is negative two. The x-coordinate of the axis of symmetry is negative two. So, all right, let's write down what we know here. All right, first the vertex. The vertex is negative 2 comma 9. That's not true. Negative 9. Let's double check. All right, correct. Negative 2 comma negative 9. And we found that by, so it started off the same way, so I'll just copy paste. On the calculator, we used second calc, and then we went to, not zero, we went to minimum or maximum if it was upside down to find the vertex. Now to find the axis of symmetry, 
in the quickest possible way the axis of symmetry ah, uses the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now remember the axis of symmetry is a line, it's a vertical line, so we do have to say x equals. So because the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 2, it's x equals negative 2. All right, and that's basically how we explore a quadratic function using the TI-84. Now we can just sketch it, which obviously I'm using a Word document, so I'm not going to sketch it for you, but you got this. See you later.